In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can take this image and get this moody look out of it. So a moody look is all about contrast. So what I'm looking for is ways we can add contrast into this image through means of, you know, actual light and dark contrast and also color contrast. So for example, with this, we're actually going to make it more of a cooler toned moody look because our subject, which is these flowers here, is yellow, which means it's more of a warmer tone. So if we can push some cooler tones into the background, we can definitely make those flowers pop. But without further ado, let's get into actually adjusting this image. So the first thing I'm gonna start out with is gonna be a curves adjustment layer. So we're just gonna add that on top. And now whenever I'm doing a moody look, I usually like to add a decent amount of contrast with the S curve and then fade out the blacks a little bit. So I'm just gonna start out by making some simple adjustments here. So I'm just gonna pull down our shadows just a little bit. We're going to fade the blacks a little bit. I'm actually going to pull them over a little bit as well. You could also even fade the whites a little bit. And I think this is just going to be a good starting point for us moving further down. Feel free to play with this around as much as you want to get the contrast that you like. This adjustment is going to be one of the biggest factors in getting the look that you're going for. As you can see here, we're already kind of getting this nice moody look. So be sure to take some extra time in this and adjust it however you like, just to make sure you have a good starting point with your contrast, because this is going to set the mood for the rest of the adjustments that we're doing. And one more thing I want to mention before we move on, it's okay if you have some clipping shadows. So for example, in here, we're actually losing some detail in the tip of this flower here. But as long as your image overall looks fine and you're not losing too many details in certain parts of your image, you should be fine. So I'm just going to close out of this curves adjustment. And so now the next adjustment we're going to add is going to be a color balance. So I'm just going to add that on top of our curves. So now with this, we're going to start creating some contrast with our colors now. So the first thing I'm going to do is come into our shadows here in our tonal range. And I want to push some cooler tones into the shadows. And I'm going to do that by just adding a little bit of cyan and blue. And again, this is kind of one of those things you have to play around with a little bit. I might even add just a little bit of magenta. Not too much, though. Just a few percent. Usually with the color balance adjustment, I don't like pushing the colors too far. Most of the time, I'm staying below 30% on any of these sliders. Now that we have that, I'm going to come up into our tonal range and go into our highlights now. Now with this adjustment, we're trying to add some color contrast. So with this one, I'm going to push some warmer tones into our highlights. And I'm going to do that by adding some red and yellow. And again, feel free to play with this however much you'd like. I'm also going to push just a little bit of magenta into this one as well. Now you can definitely mess around with the midtones, especially if you're editing a portrait image. But for this image, I'm actually just going to leave it. So now as you can see, with just those two adjustment layers, we're getting a pretty good look out of this. But now we're going to move on to my favorite part about these adjustments, and that is going to be the HSL adjustment sliders. I'm going to come up and add that. And that is going to be the hue saturation and luminance adjustment. And the reason I like this adjustment so much is because this is where you can really make this look your own by adjusting certain colors. Most of the time when I'm doing this with any of my looks, I'm basically just going down the list of colors and I'm just messing around with them until I get something that I like. But with that, I tend to follow some guidelines with this. For example, if there are a lot of greens in my image like this one, I usually like to shift the greens towards blue a little bit and reduce the luminance of them. And I like to take whatever my subject is in this case, being these flowers, and adjust the settings to make them stand out a little bit more, which would usually include bringing up the saturation a little bit, as well as the luminance. So now I'm just going to start by going down the colors here, and we'll just start adjusting them, starting out with red. So with red, I don't know if I'm really going to adjust this one too much. Obviously, there's a little bit of red in our flowers here. So I think I'm just going to bring the slider up maybe just a little bit to bring out some reds towards the middle of the flowers. And maybe bring up the saturation a little bit as well. But that's kind of all I'm going to do with the reds because we don't have very many reds in our image here. Now moving on to yellow, which is actually going to be our flowers here. Just to make sure that we are just editing the exact color of our flowers, I'm actually going to use the picker here. So you can just click on the picker. I'm going to come over and pick the color of our flowers and you'll see the color over here changed. And that basically just means we're just now adjusting the exact color of our flowers and nothing else. So with this one, again, I'm just going to play around with this a little bit until I get something I like. So I'm just going to bring the hues a little bit over 
down to about negative four. And now because this is our subject, I wanna bring our saturation up a little bit just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. So something around 30% should be good for this. And then I'll also bring up the luminance a little bit as well, just to really make them stand out in the image. And I think that's pretty good for that. So we can move on to our greens. And now because we have a lot of greens in our background here, I'm gonna shift these a little bit more towards blue, which would mean bringing it down into the negative here for the hue. So I can bring it down pretty far actually. I think around here should be good for that. Then I'm actually gonna adjust the saturation up a little bit, but I'm gonna bring the luminance down just so it's not overpowering our flowers. Moving on into the cyan. I don't think there's very much cyan in here. We just have a little bit in the shadows here. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit, maybe a little bit more towards the blue area. I think that I'm just gonna leave it at that. Going on into blues and magentas, we actually don't have much of that in our image. As you can see, as we're adjusting this around, it's just the bulb of the flower there that's changing. So I don't think there's really any need to change that too much. But now that we've messed around with those colors and the hue saturation and luminance, you can see that we've pushed a little bit more of a cooler tone into our background there with, with all of our grass and in our shadows. And then we've really brought out the color of those flowers by bringing up that saturation. But there's one more thing we're gonna do to add to this and that is going to be a split tone adjustment layer. So you can come down and add that. And now with this, we're just gonna keep doing pretty much what I've been saying this whole time. We're gonna push some cooler tones into our shadows here just by bringing it over into the blue area and pushing those in to the shadows just a tad. You usually don't need much for this. And then we can also push some warmer tones into our highlights if you'd like. But now with that split toning, we can close out of that. We have a pretty finished look here. There's one more thing I'm gonna do to finish off this look and that is just gonna be to add a vignette. So we can add a pixel layer here. So now with our pixel layer, I'm just gonna grab our paint bucket tool by hitting G or coming over here and selecting it on the toolbar. And then I'm just gonna fill it in with black. So now that pixel layer is just filled in completely with black. And then I'm just gonna add a mask layer. And so now with our layer filled in completely with black, I'm gonna grab our elliptical marquee tool and just drag out from the center here till we get something like that. And then I'm just gonna come down and hit mask layer and then hit control D to undo our selection and then control I to invert our selection for the mask. And now that we have that, we can just come up to filters, blur and Gaussian blur, and we can blur our mask and you can blur it quite a bit. I'm just gonna blur it by about 500 pixels here and then hit apply. And now I'm just gonna bring the opacity of that all the way down and bring it up until I have something I like. Something like that. But with that, we've pretty much completed our look here. And of course, you can always go back and adjust these however much you'd like. So for example, I think we might have actually gone a little overboard with our hue saturation and luminance. So we can actually bring down the opacity of that a little bit if you'd like to really dial in the look that you want just to kind of tone down exactly what we did because I think I might have went a little overboard with the color adjustments. But like I said, don't be afraid to go back and adjust anything. If you feel like something might be a little too strong or too underdone, you can always adjust the opacity of that layer like we just did there. But those are the steps I usually take to achieve a moody look in one of my images. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.